11 ways to make Windows 11 better. I don't know if it's going to be 11 or not, but it looks really good in the thumbnail. It might be 9, it might be 12. I didn't count, but we're going to make Windows better by doing a few different things. We're going to de-bloat, declutter, and make some of the junk that's running, especially the security issues like, you know, Microsoft Recall and all that AI nonsense. We're going to make it stop. First thing I want to do is get rid of this wallpaper, but my Windows is not activated. This is a dramatization for the purposes of the ad that's coming up. So let's activate Windows, and then we'll go into those 11... Windows 11 tips. It's got a nice ring to it. Someone asked why I use OEM keys as if it were a bad thing. I've been using OEM keys since the XP day, so I'd be a hypocrite if I did not recommend OEM keys. Let me show you something right here. This is the Microsoft Store. That's the retail price. And now let's head over to hookies.com. This is the price that I want to pay. You know what? Let's pay something lower than that. I got a coupon code, TS25. Hit apply. And there we go. $23.22. This also works with Windows 10. And right now, a little secret, Windows 10 does unlock Windows 11 still. So just Google maybe in a year or two. That's not going to be the case. But right now, it still is. So if you want to click on buy now on this one, put in TS25 and take a look at that. 1761. So if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription, well, you can get yourself an offline version of Office 2019 or Office 2016. Put in the coupon code and take a look at that, 5356. The only thing you really need to think about when using an OEM key is that you're not going to get the Microsoft tech support. You're going to be doing your own tech support, which I think a lot of us are just fine with. And if you're going to be changing out your motherboard or moving from one computer to another, you might have to purchase a different key because it's generally locked to the hardware. But you're going to have to purchase that key many, 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 many times to equal the price of one retail key so i still recommend the oem keys let's go ahead and check out with our copy of windows 11 pro going to use ts25 here and i'm going to submit my order let's go ahead and check out with our copy of windows 11 pro going to use ts25 here and i'm going to submit my order 269 there we go sweet yeah sure we'll save that so after you make your purchase just go ahead and extract your key and then this is a history of all the keys I've purchased, but let's go ahead and click on view keys and codes for the new one. Now we're just going to copy this. All right, here we just need to press start and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says not active. That's okay. Just click on change product key. Paste in our product key. Press next and then click on activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Now I can come back over here and change my wallpapers and everything else. Great. Don't be messing around with those exorbitant retail keys. Grab an OEM key. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. Down, the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and change my wallpaper. There we go. we got some wallpapers here. Which one should I pick? Amazing. Oh, yes. It already feels much better. All right, so let's get started here. I know some of you follow Chris Titus. Um, I think his tools sometimes do way too much. And I know you can, like, check mark certain things. But let's just show you what we've got right here to start off with this tool from Chris Titus. And if you don't follow Chris Titus, I would recommend doing so if you're really interested in like messing around with Windows or whatever. Anyway, we just hit start and I'm going to type PowerShell. I'm going to hold Control Shift when I click PowerShell and that will make it administrator. Just paste that in there and I'll show you what Chris Titus's tool is. And I was thinking about making something like this myself, but uh, you're not quite as crazy. So this allows you to install programs and you know .NET and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to skip over that and just look at the tweaks. You definitely want to create a restore point before you do anything else. So click on that and I'm just going to run this tweak. Create a store restore point. All right. And the restore point is going to be WPFT tweaks. There we go. So we created our restore point. You can do that manually if you want to. And then we have all this other stuff right here like disable telemetry, uh, disable activity history, disable game DVR. I'm going to disable my location tracking. Leaving storage sense activated. You can disable Wi-Fi sense if you're not going to be using this with Wi-Fi. I like to disable Wi-Fi sense even if I'm using Wi-Fi because you don't need this nonsense on all the time. And this was a, a feature of Windows in yesteryear. Being able to right click on tasks down here and end task. So I'm going to add that to my right click. If you want to switch over to PowerShell 7, you can. PowerShell 5 is Microsoft closed source. PowerShell 7 is completely open source and it's cross-platform. It works with Linux stuff. It's also faster. So there's not too many downsides, but for now, I'm just going to stay on whatever. doesn't matter too awful much. And then you can de-bloat Edge if you want to, but I don't use Edge whatsoever, but it's, you know, whatever. I'm not going to mess with any of these advanced ones. Over here, we've got our custom preferences. I want to turn off the Bing search in the start menu. Snap window is interesting. You can leave that enabled if you like, but Microsoft is using AI to monitor where you're snapping your windows, which is very annoying, so I'm turning that off. Mouse acceleration, always turn that off. Uh, mouse acceleration, a lot of games, 
use the Microsoft mouse input. So if you have mouse acceleration turned on here, it'll also be in your game. So I turn that off for sure. And then I keep show hidden files on. I don't care about the search button, but you can turn that on and off if you want the search right down there. I keep it off for me. I like to show my file extensions. And this is if you want the widget button, you can turn that on and off. And then I like to turn on my detailed BSOD. And then I'm gonna run these tweaks. Tells you what it's doing right up there. And if you look over here, you can see what it's doing. That's kind of a good starting point. That's going to take care of a lot of the issues that I have with Windows 11. So thank you very much, Chris Titus, for making that. Like I said, there's so much stuff in there that it's almost overwhelming. Uh, I kind of want to make a, a version just for me. I don't care if anybody else likes it or not. I want a version just for me with only a few of those options. And I want to add some other options like chocolatey and having it do things with chocolate, chocolatey. But yeah. Anyway, so my tweaks are finished. Now I'm going to do something that might be a little bit redundant, but you know, it's okay to be over the top with this stuff. Went ahead and close that out. I know he has OO shut up 10 as part of his thing, but you know. All right, I'm gonna install Chocolatey right now. Chocolatey is a package manager and I'll be using that to install stuff. So I just hit start again, type PowerShell, control shift, click on PowerShell and paste in the command. And I'm gonna install Firefox. All right, you can use this to install all kinds of apps and I'll make a video on this in the future. All right, got Firefox installed. That's all I wanted to do there but that's just a little extra credit. You can control and scroll your mouse to make the icons on your desktop smaller if you didn't know. Now you know. If you didn't use Chris Titus's tool, I wanna to show you how to turn off your mouse the precision nonsense. Let's just go ahead and type mouse and you'll have mouse, change the mouse pointer, display or speed. That brings me here. And see this little enhance precision thing? Uncheck that, hit apply. What this actually does is the faster you move your hand, as far as the mouse goes, the faster the mouse moves which is annoying. I want it to move, you know, as I move my mouse on my pad, I want it to move there. All right, next up, I'm gonna grab a copy of OO Shut Up 10. So OO Shut Up 10 works with Windows 10 and 11 and it allows us to lock down a lot of the features that are installed on Windows 10 and 11. For most people, I would say, apply the recommended settings. Just click here. Yep, you can create your restore point, yes. And 99 settings have been applied. So you can scroll down through here. This has disabled a lot of the telemetry and a lot of the junk that's going on. So, you know, you can disable access to the camera. I don't need that. Disable voice activation. So you can do all the kinds of different things. You can add things to this. Disable phone calls and call history. App access to my email. We're disabling a, a whole bunch of features of Microsoft Edge. Disabling Cortana, which is the personal assistant nonsense, and disabling the Microsoft Copilot AI. And we're also right here disabling Windows Copilot plus recall. Very important that this is installed. Every time, you know, there's an update to Windows, I like to go ahead and open up OO Shut Up 10 and go through this again just to make sure that the default settings are still there. Because sometimes when there's updates, it'll change around. So yeah. A few other things I like to do, I like to say don't show the recently started stuff. I don't know if this is implemented in that exact spot yet, but a lot of the things where it's like your file history and stuff. Microsoft is using AI to learn from that and to study that. And so that's kind of annoying. So I'm just going to turn that off. But you can keep on going through this if you want to. Disabling the extension of Windows, search with Bing. This is a lot of the stuff that we did with Chris Titus uh, tool, but you know, all right here. I generally prefer to run this every time I do an update instead of the Chris Titus tool. Some of these updates won't happen until you restart your computer, just so you know. See right there, it says it's, it may revert to its previous status, so it's very annoying you have to keep doing this. All right, restart Windows, I'm gonna do that later. And I'll show you what we've done so far. If we check out our telemetry here, I just type telemetry right there. And you see our telemetry right now, diagnostic data is off. All this stuff is off, tailored experience is off, off, off. Managed by your organization, there we go. So you see we've got all this stuff turned off right now. All right, let's uh, start again. Go to our settings. Go to privacy and security. Now click on activity history. Let's just store my activity history on this device. That is on. No, no, no. That's recall. Why was that on? We've run all kinds. I probably is still on because we haven't done a reboot yet, but you always want to make sure your activity history is off and clear your history from this device. That's basically Microsoft recall. They changed the name or it's still recall, but they it, now they say activity history. This used to say recall and privacy or some stupidity like that, but no. So yeah, about these settings in your privacy, they're going to blow some smoke up your ass. I don't believe it for a second. All right, let's disable some AI powered suggestions to just, you know, make your device even safer. Can I hit start again? 
click on settings. I'll do it this way just so you can see. Settings, there we did it that way. Go into my privacy and security here. Then I wanna go down to diagnostics and feedback. And right here, we're gonna look through this and just make sure everything's good. It should be good. Click on tailored experiences and make sure that is off. You don't want any of that, that's the AI nonsense, but we turned all that off before, just making sure. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I really need to just get rid of some of this stuff here. Now I used to run a script Oh, you know, I used to run a script that would uninstall all kinds of apps and Windows services, but I don't do that anymore because it tends to break things when things update. So what I do now is annoying, but I just come in here and all the stuff I want to get rid of, I just right click and uninstall. And this takes a minute, but you know, you just got to do it. Uninstall, uninstall. Media player, don't need that. I've got my own. Thank you very much. Outlook new. Get away from me, you vile beast. All right, the next thing I want to do is just make sure that the widgets, like the news and everything, are removed from my widgets. In fact, I don't need any widgets. I'm just going to shut them off. I don't need that stuff. So I'm going to do a little command that I'll put down in the description. So just all the stuff is going to be in the description. All right, go ahead and hit start. And I'm going to go to my PowerShell again. Control Shift, PowerShell. And I need to stop Explorer. So I'm just going to stop process, name, Explorer, and force it to stop. Is it not going to stay stopped? Let's see if it works without stopping it. So this is going to just remove the widget stuff. And let's see if I can restart Explorer. <laughs> it doesn't work. All right, that should get rid of them. May have to do a reboot for some of these things to work. But for me, the next thing I'm going to do is install an alternative start menu altogether because I really hate the Windows 11 start menu. I find it to be scant at best. I'm going to use Open Shell. It's very old school. Gets the job done for me. Maybe a bit of a learning curve for some, but yeah. So I'm gonna grab a copy of OpenShell right here. I want this version, the EXE, so we can install it. And I'm not gonna install all the options. Yes, I'm gonna run this anyway. All right, so with OpenShell, next, I accept. I would recommend not using Classic Explorer. It's kind of a mess on Windows 11. There we go. But I want the OpenShell menu, and I want the OpenShell update just to tell me like, hey, whenever there's an update. There we go, install. And I'm gonna do, there, hit start now, and now we can pick our style. I like the classic like Windows XP style. Speaking of that, let's just go full on XP. Now you're gonna have to deal with this for the rest of the video. <laughs> there we go. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is install RetroBar, which is an alternative taskbar. It's not quite 100% all the way there, but for me, it's like much better than the default Windows bar on the bottom, the taskbar. Now, I've made a totally separate video on this, so I'm just going to like, you know, tell you to go watch that if you're curious, but just note that my taskbar from here on out is going to be weird, but I like RetroBar much better. I find it much more functional for my needs and much easier to see what I'm doing. So go ahead and get this thing installed. I've already downloaded it. RetroBar just runs as an exe file from your folder and it replaces your taskbar here on the bottom with an alternative taskbar. This is all sorts of confusing. I can close this gap here by editing a couple settings in my open shell, but I'll do that not now, I'll do it later, I don't know. Oh yes, we're doing it. <laughs> Why not? Let's just have a little bit of fun. I don't run this on my main machine, just so you know, but we'll do it anyway. Lock it. All right, so that's why my taskbar looks all weird right now. I've got that up and running. All right, next up, I just wanna turn off the system notifications. A lot of these things we've already done, but I wanna bring up the regular start menu for some of these things. I'm gonna do shift start to bring that up and do notifications and then go there, notifications and actions, and then make sure my notifications are on or off. You can turn them on for certain things like I want, you know, but I want them pretty much all off for everything. So there we go. And I can turn on do not disturb. All the notifications will go directly to the notification center. That's up to you. I recommend that for like long gaming sessions or whatever. <laughs> go home and then I guess you can click on apps right here. After we click on apps, I want to click on startup. I want to see what's starting with the computer and I want to turn some of this stuff off. I do not want Microsoft OneDrive starting up. I do want OpenShell starting up and I do want the security to start up. So that's our app startup. Now there might be more things starting up. So press control shift escape to bring this up. And then over here on the side, we can just click the little hamburger to bring that out and click on startup apps and you'll see pretty much the same thing. Double menu, just making sure it's all there. Yeah, we're good. All right. All right, so next up, right click on start, click on system. From right here inside your system, we can go to advanced system settings. This is gonna speed things up a little bit. And right here it says advanced performance. Click on settings here. Now you can let Windows adjust for whatever's best for your computer. I like to do custom and I get rid of some of these animations. I don't like fading, they're just like they pop in, it's fine. 
animate windows when minimizing and maximizing. Let me show you something. Minimize and maximize. Now we turn it off. See, like, look how slow that feels. Turn it back off. Apply. There. Feels so much snappier to me. So this is going to be up to you, but you can, you know, fix this however you like. I don't care about the smooth scrolling. Good, good, good. Apply. All right, now I still have one more thing I want to get rid of, and that's OneDrive. See right here? I don't want this here. And I don't want it over here either, like right here. See, we got OneDrive. It's just in my way. I don't need that junk here. So I'm going to try to uninstall it. I'm going to open up the Windows menu right here. Click on All Apps again. Navigate down to OneDrive. Now you should be able to right-click and just uninstall OneDrive. Yes, uninstall OneDrive. Go away. Is it going to let me do it? Go ahead and uninstall Copilot too while I'm here. You can scroll through all your apps here and just figure out what you want to un uninstall, but yeah. Web search with Bing. Can I uninstall that? Oh, thank you. They're letting me uninstall all kinds of things I didn't know you could uninstall. And Xbox Live? Goodbye. And OneDrive is gone. That's amazing. So now you can just uninstall OneDrive. I didn't know you could do that. That must be something new. I love the fact that I can just uninstall OneDrive now. Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Just a short list of 11. I didn't count. 11 things that you can do. Really, if you didn't want to watch the whole video, you didn't have to. You could just do the OO Shut Up 10 and a few other things, but there could have been some golden nuggets of wisdom in the middle of the video that you would have missed, so congratulations for watching until the end. I think you deserve a reward. Do you not? So your reward shall be... Let's do mice half price with the coupon code Happy Mouse. I'll add that to the thing. And uh, when you go to Epic Pants and check out, just use coupon code Happy Mouse to get yourself one of these flawless infrared sensors. Choose wisely. They're all good. But, you know, get whichever one you want. Half price. Happy Mouse is the coupon code. And I'll see you in the comments.